towards our next presentation. We are delighted to have Dr. Shahid Abbas again with us. He shall be uh, uh, sharing his practical pearls and live demonstration of patch testing and skin prick testing. Dr. Shahid Abbas. Uh, we had a wonderful presentations about the patch testing and uh, skin testing. So those things which have been covered, we'll be quickly uh, skipping those. So in fact, this was a two-day full-time course in USA arranged by uh, American Academy of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology. And then I'm going to squeeze this course into one hour course. So we'll be, but uh, trust me, in one hour you learn a lot and you can start the patch testing in your clinics soon. So I just want to mention Professor Matt Devas, who was our instructor, and I spent some time after that to learn the, in detail about the patch testing. I, I visited his clinic for some time. And still he is in contact, and I'm getting guidance from him off and on, whenever I need. So this has been covered already by my, my colleague. But just to mention that this is most common in hair deserts, construction workers, cleaning workers, and healthcare workers. So allergic contact dermatitis is... Can you hear me? So can you hear me all? Yep. All right. So my colleague has covered all this, that it is contact dermatitis to all the things which are of daily use in the shoes, in the perfumes, cosmetics, medicines, colored clothes, dentures, corticosteroids. So it's patch testing is good for testing all those things in the body, on the skin. So patch testing is basically testing of the stand, standardized allergen on the skin under occlusion. So this is a simple standardized allergen under the occlusion. You test it on the skin and see the results. There are the two systems. The older system is the fin system, where the fin chambers are used, and it's, it has been used for a long time. There are unlimited number of allergens which can be used, but it is a tedious method, and specially trained staff is required for it which becomes a bit difficult. Now the advanced, uh, the test kits are available by two companies, which are Chemotechnic uh, Diagnostic and True Test. Uh, in USA, when we were doing the course, both of the companies were there, and so, some of the students liked one company, the other liked the other, to, uh, by comparing their, uh, their uh, specifications. But most, uh, most of them, they liked both of uh, one or the other. So most common reactors already told by my colleague already, so I don't have to go to in detail again. But the next thing I want to tell that are there are early reactors and there are late reactors. Early reactors are like, which you can see the results in 40, in 48 hours. That's balsam of Peru and thiorane. Whereas late reactors, you see the results in seven days to four, 12 days. That's corticosteroids, acrylates, gold, and neomycin. So what should you know for starting the patch testing clinic? So no. You should know when to do the patch test. Second, you should know how to do the patch test. And the third thing important is you should know what to do with the results that you read after the patch test. Indications, contraindications already discussed by my colleague, so I don't have to go again. So items which will be required, uh, in fact, my colleague is already will be showing you all these items, but I will theoretically show you on the, sli on the slides, and she'll be actually showing you on the, on, on the 
camera. So the important thing that we need is patch. So this, this is IQ ultimate patch that is being used. And the good thing about it is it is water resistant. Our patients can take shower after applying the patch test. But they should be told that they, the back should not be scrubbed with something harder on that. But, but for the normal showering, it is okay to apply this patch and one patient in the patient can have a shower. It, it is elastic. So it does not interfere with the daily activities when you apply. And third is it is transparent that you can see, read the results even when it is applied and there is some reaction going on, one can detect it. Second is this reading plate or ruler, which has got all the different type of results on it, and there is a reading in millimeters that you can read the test result. So UV skin marker, two, two type of skin markers are used. One is simple skin marker, the other is UV skin marker. UV skin marker, then you read the results with the UV lamp. Third is this device, where applicating device, where you, uh, she, she, my colleague will be showing you how to apply it. In fact, it becomes, it is so easy that you will learn it, a technique within a few minutes and anybody can start it by following that technique. In fact, these, these are the places for the syringes where you apply, put, put over there according to the number and here you, they, just you peel peel off the, 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 the plate and, and the upper part where the allergens are put, you fix it under the clip. So there's a numbering, one, two, three, from here till five and six. And this thing uh, over here, 10. So when you apply, you just apply it up, uh, upside and the lower one becomes the one the lower one, when you apply, it becomes one. So, uh, this, next. It is also recommended that you, do, you should have a digital camera with it. Uh, when you start the test, the digital photograph should be taken, and that can be compared later on with your results. So first visit, when the patient comes to you for the first time, tell, yes, that has been explained, I see everything has been explained to the patient uh, by my colleague. That is, uh, they should avoid the topical steroids and uh, the oral steroids, UV ra radiation should be avoided, and the it, back should be shaved. Then hand over to the patient the patient instruction sheet. I have already, Dr. Najam has already placed those sheets over there on the table and I think everybody has got it. And those, those when the patient comes to you, you, you should hand over that sheet also to the, to the patient. And during this time, during this time when you take the history, you, you take the history, you discuss with the patient about the, your plan of action and how you are going to conduct your, your patch testing and what you will be doing with the result and when you will be doing it. This everything will be discussed with the patient on the first visit. And then you hand over to him the, or her the patient information sheet. All the information is there. The patient should read. But you should explain to the patient also. The frequently asked questions are there, but you should explain to the patients also what possible questions the patient can ask you during the first visit. Sorry, I have to be very quick because the time is very short and my colleague has to show the, the demonstration. That's very important. So I just uh, build up the baseline so that we, you can uh, understand in a better way. So this is a patient information sheet that you will hand over to the patient. That, in that information sheet, the first appointment, 
the first appointment date has to be mentioned, second appointment date has to be mentioned, third appointment date if it is required, and all this has to be mentioned when you give the patient information sheet to the patient. So preparation of the, yeah. So when, when you are diagnosed, you are suspecting some test, uh, something, that this may, may be positive. So you go over there and select what you, the test you are going to recommend, initial test. There is a, there are, there is a series that you have to do the te initial test, and then from that series, if you suspect something, then the individual separate specific series are there after uh, doing the first test. So you <laughs> most commonly do, we do comprehensive, European comprehensive baseline series. Most of things are covered in it. So you click on it, the, uh, you go to the web page. I saw you explain that I'm using the BMO technique. For example, I go to BMO technique and I select comprehensive baseline series in, on the computer. I put up the, all the details of the patient and then print out that uh, patient information sheet and my plan of action. So when can you prepare the alert? The alerts can be prepared few hours. If you are occasionally getting the patient, then prepare few hours before that. But if you are having more patients, then you, you can prepare and keep in the refrigerator for about two weeks. So th this, uh, my colleague will be showing all you. So all this test, uh, my colleague will be showing, but when you are planning to do the test, you should have this picture in your file. And then looking at the patient information sheet and your design of the test, for example, the base, European baseline series you have selected, then there are four, four patches have to be prepared. For example, 30 tests are there, uh, or three, three patches have to be prepared. Then you just, on this picture, mark, mark down the names. For example, one will be from one to 10, Two will be two, 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 10 to 20, and this three will be third, uh, 20 to 30. So you initially, when you are you started the file, you should have this picture, and you mark your um, European baseline series on it according to the recommendations. So this is basically European baseline series. When you type that, you, you, you have created the, this thing from the computer, you enter the, all the details. For example, I have written the name of Professor Najmu Sahar. The patient name is indicated. When you are going to do the test, when you are going to have a first reading, when you are going to have second reading, everything will be on your that printout. And this is the list of the allergens that you will be having. So, preparation of the patch test. Patch test site preparation, as my colleague has already told all this before, application of flash test. So, when you are having, it is all, it is highly recommended that you, when you are busy, having a busy clinic, never give an appointment within the same week. Always give the, you just collect the patients, make, prepare the papers, design the test in the first week, and then the next week you should do, call all the patients. Call all the patients on Monday. I'll plan it for you. Call all the patients on Monday and start the patient's test on Monday. So this is the So after 48 hours, you remove, she will be explaining to you how you remove it with a diagonal action uh, it promptly. <coughs> so this is the picture, but actually she'll be showing you. So application, as I said, accumulate the patients, gather the patients in one week, next week, call them all, application of the patch on Monday. Remove on Wednesday. This should be your protocol, then the light becomes, and your, your your technique will be very easy for you to maintain. And your routine will be very easy to maintain. So remove the patch on Wednesday after 48 hours, 
first reading is on Wednesday. Mark your areas of, uh, of your interest with the marker. And second reading is on Friday. Second reading is on Friday, 96 hours. So this follow this patch, this uh, routine, and then the combination of uh, Wednesday and Friday, you prepare your results. And third reading may be required after 120 hours. That is on Saturday. So, first, so first important to repeat: Monday application, first reading Wednesday, 48 hours. Second reading Friday, 96 hours, and third reading, if required, is 120 hours on Saturday. The only important are these two readings: 96 hours and 120 hours. The important thing now to remember for you is the follows. Most important thing is if you feel something at the side, not the visual but feel at the sun. So, what you do? Reading the patch, important. Close your eyes. Move your hand, your finger on the side area. Feel something. That is the beginning of your reading. So not the visual, not the measuring with the ruler. Close your eyes, feeling something. Close your eyes and run your finger over it. If you can, can't feel anything, it is negative. Just forget it. So, you, you close your eyes and you feel something. Then may, you feel there may be something, but I'm not sure. It is almost always negative, even if you repeat it. So, don't worry about it. Third will be, you feel that I'm very, I'm pretty sure it is, there is something. But it's too small, one place. And there is 50% chance that it will be positive in the particular case. Then obvious positive is 2 plus or 3 plus, and 100% chance of if pretty. So these are the, uh, my colleague has already shown you all this. And you know, visually, when you start with the visual examination, you should see the visual imprint and erythema. This visual imprint is a sign of a good occlusion. That is very important. That if you see it, it means your technique is good and it is, will show you a good reaction. And these are the reactions this which we will demonstrate to you also. And then is the next stage of reading. So my colleague has already told you all this. Uh, this is not, not important. After the test. So would you like uh, she should demonstrate it first and then we can discuss later? Yeah. Okay, please go ahead. <laughs> the bath and uh, um, a female doctor, maybe Dr. Rim already explained everything about the patch testing. Um, there are some points important for all of you, especially when you are practicing in your clinic. Uh, make some notes for yourself and especially for the patient. No? Like um, definitely we all forget some points like uh, Dr. Shahid has explained that uh, patient should stop uh, before starting the test. I think so. Patient counseling is more important uh, because unfortunately we are not living in USA or UK where patients are more concerned about their health. Um, we are living in Pakistan and patient come in the clinic but after um, a day or two day they just don't come. Na? They just say, okay, we are fine. We have no reactions. Uh, just tell me my uh, uh, reaction if you have noted down on telephone. But no, uh, just uh, before starting it, just make some points and uh, yes, concern form. Give it to the patient. If you are ready to start the test, you must visit the patient, uh, doctor's clinics after every two days or four days if doctor recommends you. Um, but if uh, definitely some patient says that, um, no, um, my daughter is a doctor, so wo aapko test ke jo reaction hai, wo phone pe bata degi. Especially during test, wo usually, uh, uh, patient jab humayapas aate hai, wo usually yehi kehate hai. Hum nahi aasakte, hum dur rehte hai, 
तो पेशेंट को काउंसिल करना स्पेशली फॉर पैश टेस्टिंग इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्योंकि अगर आप इतना पैसा लगा रहे हैं डायग्नोसिस नहीं हो पाती तो आई थिंक आप उन्हें कह दें कि ठीक है फिर आप पहले बाकी सब काम कर लें उसके बाद आके आप पैश टेस्टिंग स्टार्ट करा लें अच्छा इसके अलावा ये कि कुछ इम्पॉर्टेंट नोट्स हैं अगर पेशेंट आपके पास आए और अपॉइंटमेंट्स पे लाइक तो बेहतर है कि आप अपने कोलीग्स को भी ये कह दें या जो भी रिसेप्शनिस्ट हैं उन कॉल के अगर पेशेंट आने से पहले अपॉइंटमेंट लें तो आप अपने प्रिकॉशनरी बता दें कि आप फ्ला फ्ला मेडिसन छोड़ के आएँ और अपने साथ अपनी प्रिस्क्रिप्शन ज़रूर लेके आए जो भी मेडिसन आप यूज़ करें क्योंकि स्पेशल डॉक्टर पेशेंट को सॉरी नहीं पता होता कि वो कौन सी मेडिसिन यूज़ कर रहे हैं अच्छा इसके अलावा ये कि रेडिएशन थेरेपी इज़ मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट अगर कोई पेशेंट रेडिएशन थेरेपी ले रहा है तो वो भी ऑलमोस्ट वन वीक उसे स्टॉप करवानी है उसके बाद आके पैश टेस्टिंग स्टार्ट करा दिए सो so, ये तो कुछ पॉइंट्स थे जो आपने अपने लिए नोट्स बनाने हैं और पेशेंट uh, के लिए फॉलो अप फाइल्स ज़रूरी है कि आप अपने पास रखें एक फ़ाइल का प्रिंट आप पेशेंट को दे दें लेकिन एक फ़ाइल आप अपने पास रखें क्योंकि जब आपने जैसे डॉक्टर शायद ने एक्सप्लेन किया कि आपने फ़ोटो लेनी है अगर आप फ़ोटो नहीं भी लेते उसकी बैक की जब आपने टेस्ट रिकॉर्ड करने हैं तो एटलीस्ट आप मैनुअली उसको अपने पास रिकॉर्ड रखें द फर्स्ट डे और द सेकेंड डे और थर्ड डे जब भी पेशेंट जो है वो विज़िट करेगा अच्छा ये तो आ, कुछ पॉइंट्स थे जो इम्पॉर्टेंट हैं क्लिनिकली वैसे तो थेरीज जो है वो डॉक्टर शाहिद और डॉक्टर रियम आपको ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन कर चुकी हैं तो हम स्टार्ट करते हैं पैश टेस्टिंग बहुत से लोग नहीं करना चाह रहे अपनी क्लिनिक पे ठीक है तो कहाँ ये हो रहा है कराची में और अच्छा कर सकते हैं कराची में तो नो आइडिया बट ये डॉक्टर शाहिद यहाँ ये थोड़ा सा क्लियरिफाई कर Uh, give a training to our doctors, and they can start it in their own clinics. Everybody can start it. So it, uh, this is uh, the latest allergy te patch testing techniques that we are going to teach today, and uh, I'm sure you will do start in your clinic now. If you could have a, a allocated one center where we can all send patients, because that we can plan it later. On. That we can plan it with the doctor. Najam, and then we can start. I this think we should. I think, think that's a very good, good idea. Think about it because a lot of people don't can't yeah, accommodate and idea. learn everything yeah. for the best. Yeah. And then analysis is very tough. Yeah. आप पैच टेस्ट कर देंगे, but products are coming all over the world. वो तो अभी आपको मैं सिखा दूँगा, आप खुद ही एनालाइज़ भी कर लेंगे. Okay, thank you. Patch testing की कुछ चीज़ें जो शायद बात साथ explain कर चुके हैं, just like a recipe कि पहले आपको क्या चाहिए, क्या चीज़ें होनी ज़रूरी हैं. तो वन बाय वन मैं स्टार्ट करती हूँ स्पेशली अल्कोहल स्वैब्स विच इज़ मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट पेशेंट की बैक को आपने अल्कोहल स्वैब से अच्छी तरह से वाइप करना है इसके अलावा आपके पास यहाँ जो अभी डेमो के लिए मेरे पास है वो यूरोपियन बेसलाइन सीरीज है ठीक है तो ये आपकी चॉइस है डेमेटोलॉजिस्ट की चॉइस है पेशेंट के अकॉर्डिंग वो जो भी सीरीज जो है वो रिकमेंड करें इसके अलावा ये कि हमारे पास ये एक डिवाइस है एप्लीकेशन डिवाइस ओके जिसमें हम इजीली जो चेंबर है हमारे पास इसको हम इस पर अप्लाई करके और हैप्टन्स जो है इसके ऊपर इजीली लोड कर सकते हैं तो स्टार्ट करते हैं सबसे पहले there should not be a injured area and it should be not be below the bra line so that just take those precautions please i'll just discuss there something that you have to clean it with the alcohol but if the skin is very oily or highly dry then simple alcohol will not be Will not be sufficient. You will have to reinforce it with the, the another tape, which is non-allergenic tape, as uh, Dr. Irma, I think, has explain, explained to you. And the, the, that is required for highly uh, dry skin and for highly oily skins, because uh, the the ta the patch will drop off if it is it is like very oily skin. Uh, test IQ show, ultimate. Hamar pas ye. Show that. It contains ten chambers. 
जिसके ऊपर हम लोग हेप्टेंस जो हैं वो अप्लाई करेंगे तो इसके दो परफोरेटेड कॉर्नर्स हैं जो आपको नज़र आएंगे स्क्रीन पे। फ्रॉम वन परफोरेटेड कॉर्नर आपने इसको ब्रेक किया एंड जस्ट स्लाइड इट इन टू दिवाइस ओके फ्रॉम वन ऑफ द परफोरेटेड कॉर्नर स्लाइटली रिमूव द टेप फ्रॉम द चेम्बर उसको बैक ऑफ द डिवाइस आपने क्लिप कर दिया दिस ग्लव इज नॉट ओके For preparation of glove, I think uh, preparation you can do do it without gloves, and then for application you can use the gloves because it is sticky and don't, you won't be able to do it. Do it. Right. Uh, you can see the numbers on the uh, chamber and the device like one, two, three, four, five, and uh, opposite to one is six and uh, five is ten. Now we'll apply heptans. The quantity of the heptan is only twenty-five microliter. There is grading on the fringe. आप इसके थ्रू जो है वो उसको 25 माइक्रोलीटर हर हेप्टन को अपने हर चैम्बर में जो है वो अप्लाई करना है स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम वन विच इज एन आइसो प्रोफाइल एन फिनाइल एन फिनाइल डाई So the heptans have been arranged according to the numbers okay. already, and uh, she is putting at the heptans according Four. to those numbers. This this should not touch the side line of the chamber. रेडी हो जाए तो ये एक ड्रॉप आपने एंड पे लगा रहा है Uh, I like to add over here that the volatile heptans are to be applied in the end, and when you are preparing those patches for two weeks, then don't add it at that time. Add that particular volatile or liquid heptan to be tested uh, a few, one or two hours before the test. so you can fill the other chambers but just don't add the uh, liquid one you can fill almost 5 uh, uh, units at a time ab uh, one unit jo hai wo hamare paas taiyar hai isko humne back tape ko apni position pe rakh diya to ek cheez jo lower left of the chamber tha wo upper left of the patient hoga to isko yaad rakhne ke ek chote se tip ye ki jis side se aapne attach किया हुआ है लाइक पहले से जो चीज़ अटैच्ड है आपके पास क्योंकि आपने इस कॉर्नर से रिमूव किया था जो अटैच्ड पार्ट है वो आपका फर्स्ट होगा ठीक है तो वो आप अपर साइड ऑफ द पेशेंट रख लें तो इसको अब हम अप्लाई करेंगे पेशेंट पे जो 
जो डायरेक्शन है वो आपने जरूर देखी है ये जो अटैच फाइट थी ये परफोरेटेड कॉर्नर्स थे और ये हमारे पास अटैच फाइट थी शुड बी अपर लेफ्ट ऑफ द पेशेंट लाइक इफ डायरेक्शन में दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू नोट वेन यू अप्लाइंग should be uh, equal on both side from the mid line kyunki uh, reading mein jo hai wo baad mein aapke liye easy hoga and just press for 5 seconds with your palm taki wo achhi tarah se uske sath adhesive tapes jo hai wo lag jaye na ab iske upar aapko ek top liner nazar aayega jiske upar maybe company ka naam bhi printed hai so aapne is top liner ko diagonally remove karna hai परफोरेटेड कॉर्नर इसको आप रिमूव कर सकते हैं इमो मार्कर्स स्पेशली यूवी लाइट के साथ इसको देखा जाता है लेकिन अब यहाँ पे मैं आ, है नहीं हमारे पास ये हमारे पास वन था ठीक है This is very important. You to uh, you have to mark this. Uh, the key point, the attached part, I have told you that it should be the upper left of the patient. First uh, and fifth, okay. first and fifth, fifth should be always marked on all the patches. If you want to mark the rest, you can mark it. But this marking is very important. Now, what is the patient doing? Is he wearing skin oily? Then you can put adhesive tapes on him to support his skin. so you can see that this is a transparent yeah. and uh, you can see the when you re, uh, will be, you can see below it also this is elastic and this is also uh, very convenient to apply okay after 48 hours ya yeah, uh, 72 hours after 2 days or 4 days jab aapne patient ki jo hai wo next visit pe check karna hai follow up ke liye to aap iski jo tape hai usko remove karenge डायगनली रिमूव करना है और फ्रॉम फर्स्ट जो चेम्बर था वहीं से स्टार्ट करना है आपने और स्लोली रिमूव करना है कि पेशेंट के लिए डिसकम्फर्ट ना हो अगर तो रिएक्शन है तो रिएक्शन के जो भी रीडिंग प्लेट्स है उसके साथ कंपेयर करके जिस तरह शायद एक्सप्लेन किया आपको कि आप उसको मार्क भी कर सकते हैं ठीक है और उसको आपने फील करना है टच करके तो ग्लव्स पहनना ज़रूरी है हैंड सैनिटाइज़र से आप अपने हाथ अच्छी तरह से सैनिटाइज कर लें उसके बाद आप इसको टच करें ताकि आपको फील आएगा कि व्हील है रिदमा है या पेप्यूल्स हैं या स्केल्स हैं तो वो आपको फील भी होगा तो दोनों साइड्स पर आप उसको करके नोट डाउन कर सकते हैं आफ्टर और मार्क कर जब वो पेशेंट आए फर्स्ट विजिट पर लाइक आफ्टर टू डेज तो आप उसको पेन से या मार्कर से उसके सराउंडिंग को भी मार्क्स कर सकते हैं सपोज ये रिएक्शन है तो आप इसको मार्क कर लें ये इम्पॉर्टेंट इसलिए है कि नेक्स्ट टाइम जब पेशेंट आए तो अगर आप पिक्चर नहीं ले सकते तो एटलीस्ट मार्क हो पेशेंट की बैक पे तो सपोज उसका जो रिदमा है या जो भी उसका रिएक्शन है वो उससे ज़्यादा उसका एरिया कवर हो जाता है तो आपको उसको रीच करने में ज़्यादा आसानी होगी नेक्स्ट टू विजिट्स पे अब पैच को आप डिफरेंट नंबरिंग दे सकते हैं अपने अकॉर्डिंग सपोज दिस इज द पैच ए द नेक्स्ट विल बी पैच बी सी डी ई एफ जो भी आप देना चाहें इसके अलावा एट अ टाइम हम पेशेंट पे फोर टू एट पैच अप्लाई कर सकते हैं किसी भी सीरीज के रूलर ये रूलर है डॉक्टर रिजम ने भी आपको डिटेल में बताया था इसके रिएक्शंस जो भी हैं वो आपने मैयर भी करने हैं और उसके सामने जो है वो मार्क भी है पॉजिटिव स्ट्रॉन्ग पॉजिटिव नेगेटिव वीक पॉजिटिव तो वो सब आप अपने पास लिख सकते हैं और ये हमारे पास एक फॉर्म है जो कि आपने अपनी फाइल में अटैच करना ज़रूरी है इस 
इसकी जो भी नंबरिंग है वो इसके अकॉर्डिंग से है इस अकॉर्डिंग से हमने इसको अरेंज किया हुआ है इसमें कि जो भी अरेंज हैप्टन है हमारे पास इसी तरह से ये भी अरेंज लिखा हुआ है इसके ऊपर प्रिंटेड फॉर्म में फिजिशन का नेम है नेम ऑफ द पेशेंट है डेट ऑफ बर्थ ऑफ द पेशेंट और द एज एंड डेट ऑफ टेस्ट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट द डेट ऑफ द रीडिंग फर्स्ट एंड द डेट ऑफ द रीडिंग सेकेंड डेट ऑफ द रीडिंग सेकेंड जो है और डेट ऑफ द रीडिंग थर्ड सपोज आप करते हैं तो ये आपको अपने पास एक फॉलो अप के लिए रखना ज़रूरी है कि नेक्स्ट टाइम जब पेशेंट क्योंकि पेशेंट कभी भी बॉदर नहीं करेगा कि वो उसी एग्जैक्टली डेट पे है फॉलो अप आपने खुद करवाना पड़ता है पेशेंट को कि आपने आना है सेकेंड रीडिंग के लिए या थर्ड रीडिंग के लिए और यहाँ पर आप इसके कॉलम्स मज़ीद एड कर सकते हैं सपोज फर्स्ट डेट पर जो आपने रीडिंग की वो यहाँ आप लिख सकते हैं स्ट्रॉन्ग पॉजिटिव था नेगेटिव था वीक पॉजिटिव था या ओनली इरिटेंट है जो भी रिएक्शन होंगे सेकेंड जब विजिट आएगा तब भी आप यहाँ पे लिख सकते हैं थर्ड जब आएगा तब भी आप यहाँ पे मैंशन कर सकते हैं तो अब एट द एंड अब आपके पास एक होल समरी है जिसके अकॉर्डिंग आप पेशेंट को आफ्टर फाइव डेज या सेवन डेज आप एक शीट दे सकते हैं जिसके ऊपर रिजल्ट प्रिंटेड हो कि आपकी सपोज फर्स्ट है एन आइसोप्रोपाइल तो इससे आप स्ट्रॉन्ग पॉजिटिव हैं या नेगेटिव हैं या इरिटेंट था या दोबारा रिपीट करेंगे टेस्ट जो भी आपके कमेंट्स होंगे आप इस पर लिख सकते हैं आई थिंक वी हैव शॉर्ट टाइम नाउ लेट्स प्रेजेंटेशन लाइट थैंक यू वेरी मच वी हैव वेरी शॉर्ट टाइम शुड वी गो हैड और स्टॉप है that the important thing starts now wo kare wo kare that's why i told you this is a very long course which we have going to squeeze it so let's start it please switch on i uh, say few words and then i finish it So after the test Okay. So give the print out to the patient and uh, i would recommend to now this is this is a very advanced uh, nowadays every there is a lot of awareness and uh, most of the people are using the all those cosmetics and perfumes which are available in usa so most of the allergens are the common allergens and i recommend you to uh, to join this uh, american contact dermatitis society and have a membership of it and uh, then the, you will see that uh, contact allergen management program also that will give a lot of guidance that that has been developed by professor zervas uh, in fact that will give you uh, you can give the code of that to the patient also where she can find all those what things are present what uh, what uh, allergens what, what uh, cosmetics or what other items can be used what cannot be used that she can click it and find out everything so so this is uh, for example Uh, in your computer uh, you have found that allergen is uh, paraffinylin di diamine so in the computer you click this blue uh, and then you go ahead everything is managed through the computer so do you there there you see that this is a european comprehensive baseline series will come then you click the side of it and then you go to this page that paraffinylin diamine is an allergen you see you point it out you click it and then you find the information all the details about paraffin that will be given printed and given to the patient uh, whatever allergen you diagnose you can give that information print out to the patient in the, in the file so there is a important another important test is detection of nickel and and cobalt in the metallic objects this is a very simple test that you put a drop of this Uh, fluid that that is sold as a kit uh, dip the the cotton 
uh, cotton swab tip in, in that solution and rub it on the object that you are testing. And the pinkish color, reddish pink color will develop if the nickel or cobalt is there. So treatment. Treatment cannot be done, but it can be diagnosed. Patient education. Just avoid a lot of information to the patient. Don't give too much information. Because too much information will be forgotten soon. It will be retained. None, none will be retained. And he will not be acting on any information. So be precise, be accurate, and give that information which is required. That is called the relevant information. Only tell the irrelevant what to use, but don't tell them what they should avoid. That will be confusing. So don't confuse the patient. Just tell them positive results, that you are positive to such, such, such. That is it. So what, what is not relevant? If you have a patient with a foot dermatitis and you find that fragrance is positive, that is not relevant. So don't tell them your fragrance is positive. Just tell them if some relevant allergen is positive. Nickel, if you find nickel in the nickel in the, in the axillary dermatitis. If nickel is positive, just don't tell them. Just tell the relevant results. Similarly, rubber. So relevance ch can change in some of the patients. For example, hand dermatitis patient is coming to you, and you find that the patient is plus two plus two uh, carba mix and also plus minus to the fragrance and formaldehyde. Don't tell them you are, initially, don't tell them you are positive to fragrance or formaldehyde. So tell them carba mix is positive, so this, this thing is present, uh, contains the carba mix. So it, as I told you, it, it can change. The relevance changes sometimes. So have them wear the carba-free gloves for eight weeks. If Relieved, great, you, you, your diagnosis is very, very good and it is purely uh, car, car, carbon mix allergy. But sometimes the patient, there is a plateau of the symptoms. Then at that time, if, if after eight weeks, is okay for some time, but again there's a plateau of symptoms, it, and the patient has avoided those carbon uh, products, then think of the other which was you did not tell, think that may be causing. So at that time, relevance is important. So, so that the same thing I admit again, that relevant, don't tell the irrelevant uh, results. So verbal information is very important. Always give the verbal information. That is important. That will be retained. Don't give only the uh, written information. If you give the both verbal and written information about the products and all those details, that is wonderful. So be practical. And if a patient has a food dermatitis and allergic to fragrance also, that don't tell them to change the shampoo because the, your patient has got a food dermatitis. So I think the, all the details are the other details that we can discuss later also, because the next uh, presentation is so important that we can discuss after that uh, sometime later. Thank you very much.